for this for the for the lack of attention that just went through right there. But we're now banging it out on Facebook Live, which is our main camera. It's still buffering. I don't know what the fuck that is all about. No, it's but live, here we man. are. Here we go. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to another edition of Live from My Mother's Basement. I brought this sign from my house in New Jersey out with me here in Los Angeles. This is my second podcast slash live feed here in the city of Los Angeles, North Hollywood. And tonight is my first time having a guest on the show because I flew in, I quarantined, I got my blood checked, I don't have COVID-19. My friend Michael got checked. He doesn't have COVID-19, so we're here tonight to have some fun and do the podcast. I, pre I appreciate everybody taking a moment to watch, and here comes one of my favorite fans watching the show already, Angela Drum, bang the drum. Hi, Angela. <laughs> so this is Mike Lenoche, or Michael. Let's say Michael, because I'll be Mike. We've done a lot of stand-up shows together. And uh, we're getting ready to go to Las Vegas this weekend, March 11th through March 14th. We will be at the Laugh Factory inside the Tropicana Casino, Las Vegas, Nevada. Two shows on Thursday night, three shows Friday night, three shows Saturday night, and two shows on Sunday night. People, we haven't been on tour in so long that I don't know about you, but I'm going to fuck this place up. I, I, well, I'm happy that we're inside. <laughs> yes. I'm happy to be inside. So... Um, Mike is from Florida originally, right? Originally from South Florida. So it's very Italian down there. South Florida not only is very Italian, but it's open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in Los Angeles right now where nothing is open. I haven't been here in eight months and to drive down the Sunset Strip. Well, yeah, I and, mean. And to see nothing. Here, Here's the thing. It's It's... For me, where we're at now in Los Angeles uh, is pretty open for me for staying here through the whole pandemic. It was, it's was it been so shut down that, like, this is, like, great, even the little open. Like, the fact that you can go outside in places. Is that stuff. right? Yeah, that's, like, crazy. Like, I'm, I'm so used to not living in a world that's fully open that just even being able to go into a coffee shop, get something to go, is like, oh, I feel way yeah. better just from that. But, yes, if you go to Florida... They, they, they didn't go through a pandemic. They're, they're normal. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Uh, Michael, being a comedian from Florida, came out to Hollywood to make his bones. He was kicking serious ass, doing stand-up comedy all around Los Angeles and on tour. Then, of course, we all got affected by the pandemic, and they shut down two of the most powerful comedy institutions in the world, the Comedy Store and the Laugh Factory. Uh, I was more into going to the Laugh Factory than the Comedy Store, although the Comedy Store is where I started stand-up comedy, and I was hoping I was going to actually be going back. So they close everything down. They have the so-called protesting riots in the street, and you stay here the whole time? For the most part, I mean, I would bounce, I would go home here and there, but then, like, yeah, I mean, I had to be safe around, you know, I didn't get to see my parents, they're older, so... I would, uh, and there was nothing for me to d really do in Florida at the time, the beginning of the pandemic. So I stayed here, and, and then you just, like everyone else, you just try to figure out how to stay sane. Like, uh, we start a little podcast in my room and just sat there recording myself, kind of like how live from your mom's basement. You know, you, you find ways to still be creative and stay sane in a way, because that's what we need to do to stay sane. We need to be creating. Not only do we need to be creative and creating, we need to be around, believe it or not, other comedians, other entertainers yeah. to keep us from doing something, let's say, stupid. Because a lot of comedians come from, let's say, busted up families. That's where they find the comedy. Or uh, dysfunctional families or alcoholic families, drug abused families. And supposedly that's where a lot of guys like that find their comedy because there's comedy in drama is comedy and pain i i don't actually come from that but i come from a crazy whacked out italian family that's where i find half that stuff but when similar you, similar to me yeah because mike's italian as well nothing crazy and, and if you're an aspiring comedian out there it doesn't mean you have to go around and do some crazy stuff to become a comedian Let's no just still be a good person <laughs> you have to tell the truth the truth is always funny when you make something up nobody takes the ride with you because it's a bunch of bullshit yeah. You tell the truth, people go, oh my God, that happened to me. Or I had an Aunt Celia who was just like that. Or I was friends with somebody like that. Or I can't believe they're eating that type of food. Stuff like that. 
So did you start stand up in Florida? I did not. I started out here. I drove out here knowing I was going to start out here. I maybe should have started. No Florida, shit. But I was like, nah, I'm going to do it there. So you didn't do any stand up shows in Florida? Watched it a couple times and I was like, yep, this is what I want to do. I was like, why, why would I do it here? Why wouldn't I just go where it's the most popular to do it? So, so how long ago was it that you moved to? Uh, April 2010. So basically, wow, 11 years ago almost. That's really not that long of a time to come to Los Angeles and go out and attack no. the comedy business. No. That's, that's uh, <laughs> actually a short amount of time. In the comedy world, people don't understand that who don't do comedy, but going into 10 years, I've been doing stand-up over 10 years, but you're still a baby in yeah. comedy. Stand-up, you become a headliner when you're seven years in, and then in about three years after the first seven, you change your act. <laughs> Then you realize you don't like what you were doing at all, and you start doing something completely different. And then some years go by, you say, you know what I originally did was pretty good, and you can go back to that. Then the world changes. You have a thing called COVID-19, and we're all going to come up with tons and tons of shit. Plus, they have this whole thing out there called cancer culture, cancel culture, which I was talking to somebody the other day because I'm going on a talk show tomorrow about how we can cancel the cancel culture. It's going to be the comedians that are going to fix this shit. Because the more they cancel shit, the more I come up with great jokes to make them realize that was stupid and senseless. Leave us alone. Funny is fun. And what are we, criminals now? No, I mean, it's not even us. It's just we're, 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 they're canceling cartoons now? Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Why they are we canceling cartoons? They got rid of Pepe Le Pew like it was a bad thing. I thought he was funny. Yeah, but even if you didn't think it was funny today, it's not something that was made today. It was in the past, so you could look back and learn from that or also just be like, oh, that's funny that the world was like that at one point, but leave it there. Like, If you're canceling that, then you might as well cancel history books. Why are we not canceling history books? Because they bring up all this horrible stuff from history. Are we going to cancel a book? Because why is it bringing up Hitler? Like, What do you mean? Like, yeah. let it, it should be there for us to look back and be like, wow, look how far we came. Uh -huh. <clears throat> We're eating right now because Michael couldn't wait. This is a nice home cooked Italian meal. It's really good. And it was cooked from our sponsor tonight, Foggia Italian Market and Deli in Lakewood, California. I've been talking about Foggia's Deli on my show yeah. sometimes almost every episode because. Not only do I love the food, not only do I love the place, I love the people who own it. Linda and Bob Quartro own Foggia Italian Market and Deli in Lakewood, California. So, when I came back into town, I went down to the deli. He has an outdoor place that he might want to do a comedy show. And as long as I, he feeds me, I'm down. Oh, we, the place is gorgeous, and it has everything. So I asked him if he would make us a nice... Italian meal for the show tonight because Michael Lenoce, Michael Marino, who knows more about Italian food than us? So let's show everybody what we're doing <laughs> while we podcast. Oh, did you want me to show the plate? If you could, he, he already <laughs> ate everything. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm going to refill it. You, you're welcome to walk around. Just don't bang out my cameras. We have rigatoni. I love rigatoni. It's the big macaroni. Sorry, sorry. There, I did it. I ruined it. And we got meatballs, we got sausage. Peppers. Put a pepper in my plate. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. This is all from Foggia Italian Market in Delhi. These are the best. And Michael here is having a blast because he said he's never had one of these. So let me show everybody. This is a red stuffed pepper. Inside the pepper is the most incredible cream cheese and you know what mike you you should bite into one on the show with me so yeah, that we can take everybody can see our faces mike just went to get himself some more sausage more macaroni more meatballs pepperoni bread and of course we're drinking iced tea he has water i'll probably have a beer now there is robert quartro right now and he's watching the show he's the one who gave us all this food hey robert thank you so much because <laughs> He can't even I've never, breathe. I've never had these before in my whole life. I've never, this is my first time eating He's these. eating it with his fingers. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's dripping. Now watch the face. <laughs> it's really good. Like, I've never... I can't believe I, I'm 35. Oh, wait. I'm 36. 
Look, it's even making me forget my age, but I've never had one of those in my life. This red pepper, seriously, is so delicious. I don't do it. I'm not doing it justice. I know what's in there. They make this with love. And you can't stop eating them. I've been eating these like you would pop popcorn in your mouth. Yeah, I would actually like all of them when I leave the podcast. Remember the cheese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael just attacked his macaroni with Parmesan cheese that we got at Foggia Italian Market in Delhi. Look at this meatball. This is like my fifth meatball. By the way, Robert, he's eating everything. And we're doing a comedy show. We got to do a show at your place. He has this area. It's an alleyway, but it's gorgeous. And if we could perform outdoors, there's no reason why we can't. It's an alleyway, so be on your best behavior if you come to the show. Otherwise, you know, Mike's got a baseball bat right over there near his door, so he doesn't mess around. I've always had a baseball bat in my house. Everybody knows. Take care of your own business. All right. While, while we're stuffing off bases, Michael being an entertainer, knowing how to host the show as well, we want to thank tonight's sponsor for giving us all this great food. There's Linda Quattro, their family. They're all fantastic folks. Listen to me. I've actually gone on stage at the Laugh Factory down in Long Beach with a sandwich from Foggia Italian Market in Delhi, and I told the audience, get out of Subway. Stop going to all these places that make stupid sandwiches. You get your sandwich made at Foggia Italian Market in Delhi in Lakewood, California, if you're in this area. They have a full-blown menu. There's a sandwich down there, a meatball sandwich named after me. It's called the Mike Marino sandwich. Macaroni, meatballs, sausages. Everything is homemade. They made these sausages. You mean you got a you got a sandwich named after? Yeah, the Mike Marino sandwich. All right. I think if we do it right, we can get a we can get a we sandwich. can get the Lenoche sandwich. What would your sandwich be? This is a lot of pressure. Pressure. I, I don't. I mean, I, I, it would probably. I Tammy like, Pam. This is my a, cousin Lucille. A meat, some sort of meatball sub. A meatball sub. Yeah. But I said meatball sub. You is gotta get something else. Is? Yeah. Yours is the meatball yeah. sub. All right, but what if I add meatball something porn. to the meatball sub? What like if I what? put meatball and sausage in it? Like sliced sausages and meatballs with more mm-hmm. it. I don't know. I'm changing the whole menu. My okay. Bad. So if you go to Foji Italian Market in Delhi, you can get a meatball palm and you get a meatball palm with sausage and those little red peppers. Yeah. Folks, Honestly. we're not even kidding around. There's some serious, unbelievable food. Put up the number in the... 5522 Del Amo Boulevard in Lakewood, California. This is 562-627-0987. Call and ask for the family down there. Ask for Robert. Ask for Linda. Ask for the staff. Go on the internet and look them up. Foggiadeli.com. Foggia is a place in Italy or a city in Italy, and that's where they're from. www.foggiadeli.com. Foggiadeli.com. We need you guys to go there and send as much business as possible so that they can open up one of these restaurants next to my house, and we can have one right here near the Laugh Factory. You know what? It's it's really unbelievable Let's that we're so it. lucky. Yeah, we could franchise it. Hey, the Mike and Mike Show brought to you by Fuji Italian Deli and Market. If they ain't got the sandwich, the sandwich don't exist. I just made that up. That's a commercial. That's a commercial. But these red peppers really are out of control, aren't they? They really are. Yeah. I, I don't know why I've never had them in my life. Like of all, like I've been, of all the Italian families I've been around, like I've never, like they're just so good. Like I. Well, we're going to take some questions because a lot of people are writing into the show so fast right now. Um, you have a lot of choices for your sandwich. Yep. Uh, Robert Quattro and Linda and the family, everybody down at Foggia Italian Market in Delhi, I love you guys very, very much. And I thank you so much for sponsoring tonight's show. Thank you for being a friend, a family member, and thank you for all this delicious food. I know when Mike came walking in my door, as soon as he opened the door, he said... It reminds me of my grandma and grandpa's place. I don't know what that makes me, but he did no, say... No, it wasn't like... It was just like the, <laughs> the, 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 the layout of the food and the smell. I was just like... Yep. It, right, it literally brought me back to my childhood. <clears throat> I have the food all on the other side and of, of course, the camera. looking at you too. I was like, oh, Yeah, no, looking no, at me. He thought he was at his mom's house, grandmother's house. But yeah, this whole house smells like incredible gravy... 
meatballs, the whole stench of goodness and wholesomeness and foodness. Yeah, I mean, I haven't stopped eating since I've been here. <laughs> and that's right now we're 20 minutes. <laughs> I can't wait for him to, he's going to tell our friends, our fellow comedians, hey, what was it like to go on the Mike Marino show? He goes, you just don't stop eating. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm literally at the point where I've eaten It's a so non-stop much. food show. It's not even a food show. Look, somebody's calling in over there. I can't take the call. But uh, Mr. Quattro, thank you so much. And uh, listen, we're getting a nice hello from the Wooden Spoon podcast. Hello, and uh, our friend Nico Taliano has a podcast in upstate New York. It's called The Wooden Spoon, and they make these wooden spoons that are like four feet, six feet high. If you ever hit somebody with this, they ain't getting back up. But um, we're going to introduce you to him right now because you should be on his podcast. All right, let's do it, Wooden Spoon, but you got to have this layout. <laughs> he, he does have food. These guys are hardcore Italians. There's even another show called Hardcore Italians. There's the Brothers from Brooklyn, which is a great show. And we'll introduce Mike to all those people. But remember, you want to have your show catered because there's nothing like... I, feel, I refilled it, I swear. But I, I can't believe it. He's skinny. <laughs> and he eats all of this. Dip. All right, Nico. So thank you so much. Well, thank here you. we are in Los Angeles. We were talking about the seriousness of how... The Sunset Strip is closed down. The Sunset Sunset Strip. Sunset, sun, sunset you're strip. Making me, you're making me mess it up. <laughs> sunset sun, Sunset Strip is closed, and uh, the two powerhouse comedy clubs are not open, which means a lot of people are sad, and I think that's why a lot of people are angry. Now, a lot of people are starting to do this cancel culture by saying stupid shit that things from the past should be uh, forgotten, like Dr. Seuss. And green eggs and ham. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I mean, just uh, like if you're one of those people, then we're not going to get along. And you're not eating any pasta, so you're just not. You're not an Italian, that's for sure. Somebody asked me, "What do you think about Dr. Seuss?" I'm like, "Look, he wasn't a doctor. If you think he was a doctor, you shouldn't be watching his show. You're stupid, okay? Yeah. He was a cat, and the only reason why the green eggs were green is because they left them out in the open for two days. Don't eat it. See how stupid we can make things sound." <laughs> 100%, but... What's it, next? Don't watch Charlie Brown? He didn't do anything to anybody. Well, they'll find something. Oh, they're going to find out. You know what Charlie Brown did? No, Charlie Brown didn't do it. Lucy did it. When he came running to kick the ball, she pulled the ball away. So she bullied him. Yeah, cancel culture. Cancel her. Get, rid, get rid of Lucy. Besides, she was an actress, and she was doing the voiceover. Now what? She ain't going to get residuals. I, don't, I, I, I have no argument for these people. Like, I, It actually gets me angry. So. Yeah. I think a lot of these people are doing this because they don't know where to go, they can't get out, and they got nothing to it's do. It's probably because they haven't been spanked by their parents like we grew up. I, I, I agree you know with that. Mean? Like, listen, we got the Wooden Spoon podcast. Where do you think that name came from? Yup, Smacky Kids. I got the Wooden Spoon until the 90s. That's when they said my parents weren't allowed to hit me with it anymore. They stopped the Wooden Spoon, and then they had to go to the ham. I'm sure you had it a lot worse growing up. You know, my man. mother crunched up her fist yeah. and punched you right in the head. That was the 30s. And, and I'm fine. Different. Bam, where's the vino? Actually, you do have vino <laughs> over there. Um, I'm sitting here with a very well-known fellow entertainer. Mike Lenoche is also co-starring in a movie called Four Cousins and a Christmas. It originally was called Pizza and Wine. Pizza and Wine. They and changed that. <clears throat> and it should come out this fall, right? If I yes. believe it or not. On the Hallmark Channel. Oh, wow. This movie was put together by our mutual friend Maria Cap. One of the Short nicest for, people I've yes. ever met in L.A. So we were making this particular project, and it stars Robert Davi, Nick Totoro, Terry Polo, yours truly, Michael Inoche. I got a little role in there. <laughs> we got a little role in there. We, we got, got a little role in there. Thanks to you. And then who? What's the other guy's name? He's got a good role. I was watching him. <clears throat> Adam Sandler's talking? nephew. Oh, Jared. Jared Sandler, Adam Sandler's nephew, is in the movie too. So when this comes out, you got to see this flick. They're getting ready to do another film. I told her to watch the show tonight because that she would be out here on the show with me. She's going to be producing and directing a horror movie in Ronkonkoma, New York. She's going from a beautiful little story about Christmas to horror. Well, if you know, if there's anything horrible, horror, it's us too. Yeah, Brian Figueroa. Look, a lot of people writing in all want to say hello. Hey, everybody on Instagram. I really appreciate all those rapid fire right into the shows. And there's Kira 
Montana. She is the daughter of the Quattro family, our sponsor, Poggia Italian Deli. Kira, we're eating on the show. We ate on the show. <laughs> um, we're getting ready to go on tour. This Thursday, we're leaving for the Tropicana, which is the Laugh Factory inside the Tropicana Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. We used to go on a Monday. Yeah. You would do two shows Monday and then every night of the week with two shows. Two shows, yeah. And three on the weekend. But because of COVID-19, we're only going to go Thursday through Sunday, which really sucks. I like to do a whole week out there. I want to go by the pool. Yeah, I yeah. want to go do what I want to do. But there's going to be some quarantine and restrictions. I wonder if they'll let us out there. Out where? Near the, the pool, pool in the day. See, that's the thing. I wonder we if we can use the gym. I, I, the what, gym, the I massage. Know that we, don't, we don't eat downstairs anymore. Yeah, that's right. They actually have this place where you go down in the dungeon of the casino and you eat yeah. with all the people that, that work. That might be there. actually a good thing. They yeah. got rid of that. that, that we're we're not going to do that. We're getting now. a per we're getting, diem. We're getting, yeah, that might be better, actually. We might have to go by Fogia and buy a week's worth of food if and take it with us. somehow ship it to us. Yeah, to <laughs> probably Vegas. could. It's not that we're going that far. I'm driving. Um, um, yeah, that that's uh, yeah Thursday to Sunday, but still 10 shows. Are you doing the third shows? Yeah, I mean, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Unless you Well, I got no. the offer, and then and they said, if you want to. Well, you didn't have to do the third show. Well, yeah, I want all of them. I want it all. I mean, we were deprived shows and money this the past year, so give it all, uh, hey, to us all. Check this out. Bob and Linda Quattro, tonight's sponsor, are saying they got married at the Tropicana in Las Vegas. Really? How crazy is that? That is crazy. We're going to the Tropicana. Well, what room were you in? We'll go in there and pop some balloons or something for you. Oh, yeah. Or me and him will reenact the wedding night. It's yes. either or. I'll be Linda. All right. Is this a rated R podcast? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Um, I, I have a, actually a story about the Tropicana is when I first drove out to Los Angeles. Uh, we were stopping all the, all the different cities. And I had my dog with me, and I got a room because the Tropicana used to have those outside rooms near the parking lot. I go, give me one of those outside rooms. And I opened the door and put my dog in the hotel room. And we left in there and then went out at night. And then when we came back, the door, our keys weren't working, and I guess he was barking, and they kicked us out of the hotel. So dogs are not allowed in the hotel? No, well, not in 2010. That's hilarious. But, like, I snuck my dog in there, and they kicked us out and didn't give me my money back. And that now I go back there and they pay me. So that's kind of... Uh, it's so hilarious. Nothing like an circle. Italian kid from uh, Florida saying, you know what, I'll get the dog in here. Yeah. Bring him in through the pool entrance. Yeah, that's literally what we did. It's really great. This food is absolutely delicious. We're going to be eating for hours. Um, we watched in the news, and as comedians, we'd like to make a quick comment on what we saw. And I'm sure a lot of people out there got to see this too. But there was an interview about the Queen... About your majesty, about the royals. Yeah. Now, I mean, I don't know much about the royal family. I asked, I actually asked somebody, do we have a royal family here in the United States and who would they be? Probably the Trumps. <laughs> They're the royal family. Yeah. Um, and you know, when you're listening to the interview, I'll make no comment. But I really wish they would interview me. Interview me. And I would say, <laughs> oh, I, I fucked up the curtsy. I tried, but my back. <laughs> Here's the problem is, is I didn't get to watch the whole interview, but like, she's throwing the family under the bus. She threw what the family under the bad bus. And the dude's there, too. It's like, honey, why doesn't he say, hey, honey, honey? Uh, could you stop talking about my family like this? Well, then I found out how much they got paid for the interview. Really? Eight million dollars. No. Something like seven million dollars. No. Yeah. I thought it was free. No, no, bro. This was not free. Where does Oprah get seven million? She got that kind of money? Oprah's got billions. Imagine giving somebody seven, eight now million dollars. Now would you throw your family under the oh, bus for fuck seven yeah. billion? I'd bring the bus to the interview. <laughs> Dad, put your head over there. I'm going to run you over. Give me the millions. Give me the millions. No. Oh, my family fucked me up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, the shit that they do. Man. It's just interesting. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I understand they're in the public eye, but I would just be like, oh, I just didn't maybe connect with the royal family. That's fine. But to be like, you know, here's some bad stuff, like little skeletons in the closet that she was revealing is like, all right. So, and it's funny. I'm surprised America's not trying to cancel Queen Elizabeth. 
she's not even in America, but I, I feel like, you know, she hinted that maybe they had said some inappropriate comments to her about the skin tone of the baby, hoping that it wouldn't be too dark. I don't know if you heard that. I, I, I heard it. I watched it. I watched it off. I had to turn it off because Andy Griffin was on. That's my favorite show. I like to watch good, wholesome, hardcore, funny ass, written, good shit. I watch me TV with the original comedy shows. This whole royal family thing was kind of like, wow, this girl just blasted that family. You could only imagine what would happen if somebody blasted my family. They'd be standing there going, hey, come on, I want to talk to you about something. When did, when did we, what, what did we do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I guess he's ride or die with her because he went with it. He knew, they live here. Apparently, right? Yeah. In California. I don't yeah, know supposedly where. Supposedly, at one time, they were living in somebody else's house, and they had to have security, and he paid for the security. How much money? How do they make money? They just kind of just be who they are? Well, I, mean, I don't know. Well, we know they just made $7 million, If so. they really got paid that kind of money. Yeah. Where, where do you even come up with the number? Like, if I was Oprah, and I had billions of dollars, I still would say, listen, uh, we'll give you something to eat. You want to talk on the show? <laughs> we'll have a catered by Paul Giotani. I mean, yeah, there you go. They're like, they're like, What's that Italian food? Well, not really. Yeah. We'd rather have a potato. Sorry, that's not the best British accent. I know. Let's I, try that, though. I should have a British accent because my mom's British, actually. All right. Let's 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 pretend we're in Great Britain right now, and this is the uh, the news. <clears throat> oh, I can't believe. <laughs> Welcome to Channel 4 News here at the Evening News here in Great Britain. And we are disappointed to find out that Meghan Markle, Merkel, Markle, doesn't matter. Her last name doesn't matter. She's not royal anyways. Yes. And her sister is quite the jewel. <laughs> I would like to meet her sister. I'm pretty sure she's available. Is she not? I don't know. I feel like Paul McCartney. <laughs> oh, boy. They're going to cancel this show very soon. Uh, yeah, well, it's all laughable, and I'm glad that there's people like us out there that still can make people laugh and uh, fight the whole cancel culture baloney, because when the comedians are all ready to go back on stage, yeah. it's going to be up to us. I really feel it's going to be up to us to straighten out the world through the eyes of funny people. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to, uh, I'm, I'm going to do me, and it's like, why can't people... I've always kept it to myself. It's if people personal. have a problem with stuff, then don't watch it. Don't go out. Don't click it. Stay home. And if if you're really, honestly, I believe that if you're really bothered by something that someone else is doing, then maybe it's something about you internally that you have oh, to I... fix. Because, I mean, anything that, like, I'm pretty even keel. I mean, I don't know. No, sometimes I do get upset about certain things that maybe... But, they, but I, I recognize that they don't matter. Like, I can get um, a little too passionate about maybe sports or something. And it's not a big deal. And I always remind myself that, like, uh, about, about that. And the next day I can move on from it because it's not that big of a deal. But if someone's doing something and you don't like what they're doing, that's out of your control. But people want to, people want their opinion to be valued today. They, they want to be heard. They want to, they want to have some self worth. And some of these people, and I'm not taking shots at anyone who is not in the arts, but like, let's say you are just, going about your life and maybe you don't have kids to worry about and or to lead or something and you have too much time on your hands and someone's doing something that you don't like you might voice that you don't like it and you want people to hear your opinion and you think it should be valued because you don't feel valued personally i don't know if that makes sense you know what i mean it like does. maybe you don't feel like you you don't have some self-worth how about this a perfect example and then call me out if i'm wrong how many people Ha, w would you consider, oh, they're pretty successful. They have drive, they're working hard, and they're focused, and, they have a, uh, and they're happily married with kids. How many of those type of people are the ones online complaining and wanting to destroy people? I would, I would guarantee you less than 1%. I would guarantee you because those people are focused on themselves. They're like, hey, I got my own shit to do. I'm working and I'm focused. If you're online complaining about some shit, that's because you're insecure or upset about your own personal life. And you're mad and you want your shit to be heard because you don't feel valued. Nobody successful is going after someone. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. So think about that. You're never going to see a multi-millionaire going, we need to get rid of uh, Snoop Dogg. 
Yeah. Doggy Daddy. Like, uh, what am I thinking of? It's Snoop Dogg, but that's no, fine. No, not Snoop Dogg. P. Diddy? No, not those guys. The dog on... Uh, oh, the the, P, the, P, the the cartoon? Yeah, him, but that was a, uh, a rabbit. There's a, another dog that they were going after. Super Dog, I don't know. Well, whatever, the dog. They're not going after a cartoon. Yeah, it's a cartoon. That's just crazy. It's crazy to even go after a fucking the cartoon. cartoon. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Who this, hurt you? There's got to be some... That's exactly you, it. You know what it is? You didn't get hurt enough. You didn't get bullied. That's you, why we need bullies. Yes. I used to say that all the time. I'm going to... I'm good. I'm, I'm going to... You know what? If I have kids, I'm going to beat them. And not because I want to. Don't take this the wrong way. But it's because I need them to become bullies. I need them to take out their anger on other people because this is... That's not going to fly well. Can we edit that part out? I'm just kidding. No. It's fine. It's I got joke. bullied when I was a kid. I tell everybody all the time. When I went home crying, my father said, well, go bully the kid back. And you went right back to school the next day and you did your best. Now everybody can bully each other, I guess, on the internet, which is the chicken shit way because you can't see the person. Yeah, yeah. And it's also like, there, it's, it's also, it's funny to bully someone on uh, the internet because like you're going after people who are putting themselves out there, which is already hard enough. I mean, we get we're used to it, but like anyone else putting themselves out there, putting their art out there, they're 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 being vulnerable. It's very easy to attack someone who's putting themselves out there, especially when you're hiding behind a profile. That just shows how low of a self esteem or moral morale you have if you're one of those people. That's what I'm saying. Behind I a, agree. A, a little private chicken secret shit profile, which is like it's hard not to get upset at them because I want to, but then you're like, this is a waste of energy, and then they're winning. They're winning if you if you. She said Scooby Doo. Yeah, is that who you were and then she about? also said Mar Marmaduke. But I was thinking of Scooby Doo, like who's gonna say something next about Scooby Doo? There was also another dog, Mighty Mouse. No, it was a mouse, Mighty Mouse. <laughs> dog, right? Mighty Mouse. And then, well, he looked like a dog. And then there was one of my favorite shows. I know they're gonna go after the show. I probably shouldn't even mention it. Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse. Oh really? You remember them? I, I maybe if I saw the picture. Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse. And they had an enemy, and it was the frog. And he, the frog was supposed to be like Edward G. Robinson. He'd go, yeah, we're going to rub out Minute Mouse. We're going to rub him out, Shane. We're going to rub him out. Yeah, maybe I remember That's that That's hilarious. One. He's next. I mean, all of them. Maybe like any of those cartoons that I grew up on where there was always one bad villain in it or like even something more up to date. I, I, this is when I stopped watching cartoons. I, I think I started getting too old, but there was the Hey Arnold. She had a bully. He had a bully, and it was the girl. Who? Well, I forgot her name, but like that was she p portrayed a bully on the cartoon. Are they gonna go after her because it's a cartoon portraying a bully? Because they're like, well, you're giving kids the idea that they can bully, or something like that, or Roger from Doug Funny, or um, you know, even in uh, The Simpsons, there's um, there there's a bully in, in there, the guy who would beat up Bart sometimes. Like, yeah, are we gonna take those characters out? That's right. Because it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what like that, that's. That's just you need a hobby. You guys well, need have it. a hobby. That's right. Let's take in some questions. Anybody wants to ask some questions, especially on Facebook? We can't see the Instagram I'm from here. Water. Mike's going for some water. Get it. Get yourself a beer. Make yourself happy. Smoke a joint if you want. I don't remember Red Dog, Moose, and Squirrel. I do remember. I remember Underdog, but there was Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse, which was one of my funny. Was one of my favorite shows. And then there was uh, who was the tiny little cat? Um, Tiny little cat. He had his bag of tricks. Ah, fuck. I'm not going to remember them. But, um, okay, so go. got any questions? As you can tell, I'm wearing this shirt that says AccuVision. We're going to talk about my latest sponsor, one of my biggest, hardest working sponsors in the United States. Uh, this is going to be big, 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 folks. AccuVision. It's going to be a place where you guys can talk. Felix the Cat. That's right. That's what I was saying. Felix the Cat. I see Felix the was. cat. He was a lovable little cat. They're probably going to get rid of him. Um, top cat was uh, Labrador. Uh, Mike, did you marinated say... Marinated mushrooms. Have any marinated mushrooms for Mike? Shh. <laughs> you hate I, ate, I ate them. I ate them. That's fucked up. Um, Mike, I'm sorry, but... Um, um, I wanted the marinated mushroom. Now, now so I have to Italian Deli and Market there. They gave me a marinated mushroom. They're fucking unbelievable. And you couldn't, I ate you couldn't them. hold I ate them. them. No, I, I purposely did a macaroni dinner for Michael. I ate all the cold cuts. Oh, he's just saved me these. These are the best. All right, well, he's going to eat these. I ate the cold cuts. I had mortadella. I had supersada. 
I had roast beef, I had turkey, and I had Swiss cheese, and I ate all that sandwiches, and I, I ate the bread except for this bread, and uh, what else did they give me? They gave me the most incredible shit. Cookies, I ate all the cookies. <laughs> yeah. They were cookies? Yeah, cookies, with the, they were the little butter cookies, and um, I do have some coffee, and I do have the, uh, the wine. Look at him writing busted. I did get busted. <laughs> Way to rat you out. They're just like Meghan Merkel. Hong Kong Fooey. Do you remember that? No, which one's that? It was a karate, the karate dog. The cat. The dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think it was a dog. Him. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I even remember the jingle. Hong Kong Fooey. Quicker than a human on. Hong you... Kong Fooey. That's all I know. There what? we go. There we go. What was wrong with a show like that? Pepino, the Italian mouse. He was an alcoholic. That's funny though. <laughs> That's funny to make. It was guys a guy, like Pepino. He was an Italian, Italian little. He was a rat. <laughs> That's funny to make him like that though. They they should have problems. We got a ten minutes. I'd like to fill it up with a lot of questions. Come on, guys, let us happen. I don't know if you could see up there, but um, LOL, I'm getting hungry now. Well, yeah. Felix the cat. Hey, Anthony Arena, how you doing, man? Watch the show on Facebook so we can see what you're writing. Andy Cap. Oh, rem I remember Andy Cap. That was really well written. Make sure you go to the deli before you go to Vegas. Just have the vacuum seal everything and put it in nice. See that? They were actually offering us food before we go to uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, we'll have a picnic a post, at the Tropicana. LOL, I busted you. Yeah, you definitely did. I ate. I ate. <laughs> they fucking busted me. That was Linda on hey, my Panther, account. What? Banana splits. I remember the banana splits. It was a big, big. No, I don't remember was, banana splits. I don't I know what they wore. Panther. The pink panther. I never really understood what it was really about. <laughs> Any of these shows. Look at that, Mike. Yeah, it's a little red me, pepper. I, I'm gonna. I, these are really good. I'm gonna have to bring some home. A lot. He's of taking home. some of these home. Most of them. All of them that are left. You said you have more in the fridge. That's yeah. a mistake. I'll take them all. I remember when I was a kid. On Sunday, after you went to church, you ran home to watch Sunday cartoons. And when I was in grammar school, I come home from school like three in the afternoon, and you watched Lost in Space. Remember him? With the robot. Folks come to see Mike at the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Thank you, John Fossiter. You know, you could take bread plain bread, and dip it in the oil of these red peppers. You put a little balsamic vinegar in there, yeah, and it's to die for. Yeah, no. I, I, you give you that I, same I love bread too, but I always Leo. am aware of like, nope, I'm not going to let myself get full off the bread. I want to get full off the meatballs. Um, Check this it's out. snowing in Lake Tahoe. Dora Fortino is bringing us wine from her winery, in Northern California. To Las Vegas. To, yes. That's so, awesome. So Dora, who's saying right now that she's in Tahoe, we will see you Thursday or Friday night at the Tropicana. This is Michael Lenoche, who's going to be in the show. You're going to have a lot of fun watching us live. There's my cousin Lucille Herman, who's down on the Jersey Shore. Hi, cousin Lucille. Lucille. Dr. Zachary Smith was in what we were just talking about. Lucille. I want a cousin with seal. Look at this. I'm drooling watching you eat the stuffed cherry peppers. Cherry peppers. I said red peppers. Red, red cherry peppers. My parents need to send me another care package. Are oh, you really my. drooling over the peppers or is it... Uh... Look, there's a great producer on the East Coast right there. My friend Danny C. His real name is Danny Colicchio. Colicchio. When things open up, Danny, we're ready to come back to the East Coast. Thursday night, we're going to get a boatload of wine from Napa Valley. Keep Perfect. on sending in the stuff. That's right. We love Lost in Space. See all these great people writing into the show. Instagram, how you guys doing? I don't mean to leave you out. I hope Gigi writes in from Italy. Hey, Gigi from Italy. Yeah, we love you, buddy. Fratello. <laughs> There's so many Italian names. I can't, I can't remember Yeah, I know. Our dear friend Marco Asante was supposed to come with us out to Las Vegas this weekend, but his father's not feeling very well, so... I believe he's in Florida, hanging around with his dad, making sure everything is okay. Oh, his yeah. mother is in uh, New York City. But, um, hey, there's a Mike Marina right there. Mr. Chan and Chan Clan, canceled by cancel culture. Was it really? I don't remember that one. I do. Vinny Ciceri, what the F? Where's my plate, Mike? 
Hey, Vin, take a ride over. Vinny no, Ciceri, right? Yeah, I, I he's, a hang, he's a comedian. He's over at the uh, uh, comedy store. Okay. Big Vinny Ciceri. You don't want to mess with him. No. I, Better yet, bring the peppers to the show March 20th. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or give us the recipe. No, I know you can't. I'm kidding. They're so damn good, and it keeps you from breathing. I'm so full. It's almost like candy. I'm so full. Hey, folks. I'm going to do a shout-out. To another sponsor of a different kind. This is going to be one of the title sponsors for Mike Marino Live on Tour. I'm going to change some uh, ideas from Make America Italian Again, which will always be a phrase and a motto, but I want to call my new show Straight Out of My Mother's Basement. Straight Out of My Mother's Basement, and I'm going to bring all the characters that I'm doing, my cousin Michelle, Mooney the Surfer, and my Uncle Tommy. I'm going to have a lot of fun, and I guarantee you guys are going to enjoy it. We're going to keep on doing my podcast every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on the East Coast, 5 o'clock right here on the West Coast. I'm always going to have a great guest on the show. I can't wait to have my friend Vinny Ciceri, who's been in so many different movies on the show. We just have to plan it. Vinny, I wanted you to come by tonight, but Michael and I are headed out to Las Vegas this Thursday as we head into the Tropicana. So before I tell everybody where they can find us perform, I want you to go on the internet and look up AccuVision. Okay, AccuVision, my friend Andy Rosenfar, he's a chiropractor, but he also does, um, what do you call it when they put nails in you? I, acupuncture. acupuncture. He does acupuncture, and he Tell also has these things where you go in the cylinder, and you relax in that cylinder, and you breathe this incredible air. We're going to get more and more into it. I'm going to go into the cylinder myself and see what it's all about. As you can see, I'm looking monstrous. That, I'm yes. healthy. I'm doing what I have to do. So go to AccuVision.com on the internet, Accupuncturehealth.net, Accupuncturehealth.net, and check out my friend Andy and see what we're all going to get ready to do. And now, if you don't mind, Mike, tell everybody where they can find you and what you got coming up. Before I do, I, I want to respond to Kira. Is Kira sure. Montana? She goes, Michael. How do you like my family's food? Is she late to the conversation? Did she get in here late? Yeah, Kira, you're late. Kira, I, I ate two plates. He ate so much. Two plates. I left one meatball. Fochias. I don't think I'm not going to eat that meatball. <laughs> I'm just right now. I I ate, you, you like this is what the problem with Italians is. We eat until we don't feel good. Like it's not even feel good. It's like. It hurts right now. My stomach hurts because it's expanded, and I can feel it pushing against my other organs. So your family's food is so good that I'm trying to kill myself from eating so much. That's basically what's happening right now. I told everybody that were watching the show, Kira, that the uh, sausage is homemade, the meatballs are homemade, the sauce slash gravy is homemade. I heated everything. Of course, I boiled the water for the macaroni or pasta, whatever you call it, which I got at your place as well. I got everything down there, and there's a bottle of wine sitting here for us to go finish. But the meatballs were fantastic. The bread is soft, buttery, delicious. Everything down there. Folks, if I could just tell you, one of the greatest places. <laughs> Someone's making fun of me because people are like, they put the nails in you. Like the nails. The, the, the acupuncture. Hey, man. They came at me, man. <laughs> so go ahead, Mike. Tell everybody where we're going to get to check right. you out. Um, you're gonna check me out. Uh, first of all, it's good to be working again inside. So this year, I think uh, this is my first time. I think I was maybe in Florida earlier this year at first because I was the only place. But we're gonna be in Vegas this weekend. That's awesome that we get to do what is it? Ten shows. That's awesome. Yeah. Ten shows in Vegas, and then coming up, I am. If there's anyone from DC, April eighth, I will be at Arlington Draft House, and that's you know right. I say DC, but it's Arlington, Virginia. But that's Everybody knows that's D.C., so you just say D.C. So if you're up in the tri-state area, why don't you just come drive down and come see me in D.C. April 8th is a Thursday. I know it's not a weekend, but whatever. they get, That's what they give me, and I'll take it, and you got to come. And it's safe, and they do temperature checks, and you wear your mask, and there's only 89 people allowed in the venue. And, and come, and then we can go eat afterwards, but that's April 8th. And you can check everything out for me on michaelinochi.com. That's where... Anything for me is. Excellent. MichaelInnoche.com. And don't forget, if you're in Vegas, or even if you're not in Vegas, there's people flying in to catch our show this week. Yeah, let's We do got that. people coming in from Northern California. I have friends flying in from Chicago, friends coming in from Texas, 
friends coming in from Colorado. We are going to be at the Laugh Factory inside the Tropicana Casino and Hotel this Thursday, March 11th through March 14th. Two shows a night except for Friday and Saturday night. We're squeezing out three shows. We're going to have a lot of fun. We'll get to hang out. We'll social distance. We'll yell across the street from everybody and have some fun. Vegas is going to be a trip anyway. It's supposed to be really warm. Hopefully we can go in the pool. Yeah, hopefully we're allowed to do, I mean, and we're going to lose all the money we're going to make. So we're going to, because why not, you know? Yeah. You only live once. Uh, you could always find me, everybody knows where, MikeMarino.net. All you got to do is subscribe to my newsletter. It comes out every Wednesday at 8 o'clock at night on the East Coast. Go to MikeMarino.net. All my social media is at Mike Marino Live. And I want to bump up my YouTube channel. You can watch me and Mike all the time on my channel, which is Mike Marino Live on YouTube. Now, if you would like to be on my show, or you would like to be a sponsor of one of the Live from My Mother's Basement show, send me a DM, which means direct message, or write to me. Or, if you think you're funny and you could be on my show too, all you have to do is write to Mike. Marino Entertainment at gmail.com. Say hello to the producer of this show, Tatiana Blue Shell, and tell her why you could be a sponsor and why you think you should be on this show. And don't forget, I also have another show. Yeah. The last Sunday of every month at 7 o'clock, the Not So Late Show with Mike Marino, featuring stand up comedians, singers, musicians, all kinds of great entertainers. That's every last Sunday of the month at 7 o'clock. If we're lucky, we might even have one of the singers writing into the show right now, Eddie Sessa, who's absolutely phenomenal. So I want to thank my producer, who produces the show live from my mother's basement, Tatiana Blue Shell. Thank you so much for being a great you producer. You have to be able to eat, too, if you want to be on the show. Yeah, I think no, maybe. <laughs> no vegans or vegetarian. Like you got to be able to eat and indulge. You can do it. So we got to get going. I want to say to everybody, let's make America Italian again. You don't know nothing, you don't see nothing, you don't say nothing. And how do I end every single one of my broadcasts by always saying the same thing? No, no, you got to say it with me. Oh, I thought you wanted me to keep it a no. secret. Oh, oh. I was giving it to you because I know you know. Cut. Get, We're going to try it again. All right. Oh. Ready? Don't, don't take, take no shit from nobody. nobody. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying watching my podcast live from my mother's basement. We're having a lot of fun and I'm going to have a lot of great guests on the show in the future. So if you like it, hit like. You could also leave a comment. You could subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch other funny videos. And you could also listen to my podcast on your favorite podcast app like Spotify and iTunes.